everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve, and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now, if you're returning to the channel, thanks for being down with what we're doing here. Glad you like it. And if you're new to the channel, if this is your first time, welcome aboard. Hope you like it. Um, you joined up at the right time. This is an awesome build tonight, and it's an easy build. So if this is your first time here, this is perfect. Um, so, without further ado, Black Sheep Props would like to introduce you to the newest member of the family, the Viking Shield. <laughs> That's right, check it out. All right, this thing is totally awesome. We've got a shield made up of wood panels. We've got wood grain. We've got a shaped steel dome in the center. We've got the double steel rim around the outside. We've got round rivets. We've got flat rivets. We've got the super awesome two-headed red dragon in the middle. Uh, we've got it painted up to look a little weathered. We've got some weathered steel and we've got some faded wood where it's lighter in the middle of the panels than it is on the outside, like it's been hit with the sun for a while. Um, very cool. Um, so in this episode, Making an EVA Foam Viking Shield Part 1, we're going to assemble this bad boy. We're going to get it all built in one episode because it's an easy build. You're going to be able to knock this out of the park. Um, so, if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. Super simple build. We're going to have a wood shield. We're going to have a raised metal dome in the middle. We're going to have the double metal band around the outside. We're going to have small flat rivets on the inside and we're going to have round uh, rivets around the outside. And okay, here's our inch thick piece of foam and we're going to transfer our shield over to that. We're going to simply trace it out and we're going to go from there. All right, there's the outer shape of our shield. Now, We've built a shield before and we successfully cut the whole circle out with our box cutter and remember what we've gone through with our knife techniques. As long as you have the knife standing straight on a 90 degree angle, you can make the whole cut around this easily with a box cutter as long as you've made sure you got a sharp blade. This is absolutely no problem. As long as you keep your knife straight, you can cut around the whole thing and do a nice 90. But I have a bandsaw and that makes it a little bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is move off to the side and I'm gonna cut this circle out on the bandsaw. Okay, dust mask on, bandsaw going. Beautiful perfect 90 degree edge all the way around because of the bandsaw, but like we talked about before, you can do the exact same thing with a box cutter. Just make sure it's sharp. And okay, now we're drawing our lines. And there's all of our three inch strips. And we're gonna cut the grooves on all these lines so that it appears that these are panels of wood attached together. And the way we're gonna do that is very simple. We've done this before. If and we're not gonna hold our knife straight up at a 90. We're gonna tip our knife on a 45 and we're going to come in like so. We're gonna not be, not be perfectly straight. We want a little bit wobbly. So we're gonna wave back and forth and we'll show you why in a minute. So we waved back and forth on an angle and we came right out the other side. Now we're gonna spin this around same thing, go into the 45. We don't want to be straight on the line. We want it to be uneven and this is why. Look at that. And now we're just going to repeat that all the way down the rest of these lines. Wow. <laughs> that is instantly went from a flat round piece of foam to Panels of wood attached together with the groove in the middle. Super cool. Okay, now we're gonna come in with our Sharpie. Like this. We're gonna come in, we're gonna go like that. See what's happening? We're starting to make a wood grain. 
Perfect. Now we've got our wood burner heating up and we're going to wood burn the lines next. Uh, we've talked about this before. If you're in a super tight enclosed area and you're going to be using that, burning this, you want to use your full-on respirator because that is toxic. That's burning plastic, basically. Um, slide right through. Okay, so what we did was we cut two long three-quarter inch wide strips of foam. And what we're going to do with those is we're going to use these to wrap around the outside edge of our shield. And because it's only three-quarters of an inch wide, it's going to be easy to bend around the outside of the shield. Okay, now you know what we do before we contact cement on foam. We're just going to go ahead and heat seal the whole thing. What it also does is it shrinks the foam, so all of our cuts we made and all of our wood grain that we made with the wood burner is going to kind of open up a little bit. The foam tightened up, it glossed over really nice. Look at that. All right, now we're going to heat seal the strips that we're going to wrap around the shield as well. And we're going to use our piece of wood so that it absorbs the heat and we don't burn our cutting mat. And we try to slightly cover our Sharpie lines so that we know that we're going to have complete coverage and it's going to stick all the way to the edge, which is very important. Okay, so now we have the outer edge of our shield contact cemented. We have our two metal strips contact cemented. Now we Weigh five and then poof, line our strip up flush with the edge of our shield. And we just bend the foam. And we just do that all the way around. When we get to those creases and you use your thumb, it dents them in so that it looks legit. Now we got to start our next strip there. So we're going to spin this around. We're going to take our next strip we're going to line it up, but the thing is, is if you notice the little gap we left right here. The reason we did is because this is supposed to look like somebody hammered on two different pieces of metal. All right, see that? Here's the end, and here's our piece. Now, roughly right here, and again, we don't want it to be perfect. We want to cut it on a little bit of a crooked angle like that. There we go. Now, when we put this in place, we don't line it up perfectly. See that? We leave a little gap there. That way, it looks like real thin pieces of metal were banged around and they're not perfect. So see that? We've got the little separation right here. And on the other side, we've got the little separation right here, which is exactly what we want. Right. What we're going to do next which is one of my favorite things, is we're gonna come in with the Dremel. That's right. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna change bits. We're gonna to come to this little round bit. Nice, look at that. Like banged up, like it's kind of been like hammered a little bit. We could make this look like hammered metal. Let's do that. We're gonna use this same round bit and we're gonna just tap all the way around. Just like that. Woo, look at that. That is why you wear a dust mask. Look at that. Holy smokes, man, it is everywhere. All over the table, we're gonna to have to clean up for a few minutes, but Besides that awesome safety tip, oh. hammered metal feel. Look at that. Super cool. All right. Time out. Let's clean this mess up. Okay, now because we exposed raw foam around the edge of this with the Dremel, we're going to heat seal it. But we don't want to do it too heavy because we don't want glue to separate. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay, now we're going to cut one inch thick strips of one inch foam for the band that's gonna go around our shield. Now, we could do this through the bandsaw, but 
We've done it before with a box cutter and there's no reason we can't do it with the box cutter. You can try to get the knife behind your hand if you can, like we're doing there, see that? And there you go. That is some sweet, sweet 90 degree action right there. Okay, now when we come in and we start to wrap this, we want to raise it up a little bit so it's a raised lip around the edge right here. So, which means, let me turn this over, which means we're going to want our foam strip to be raised up and not flush with the bottom. So we're going to have to draw a sharpie line around there so when we're sticking it on we know we're, we're laying it down exactly where we want. So we're going to measure that sharpie line out next. Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to take our pieces that are going to wrap around and we want both top edges to be dremeled. So we're going to dremel around all of the pieces we cut. Okay, we've dremeled both sides of our strips. Nice, look at that. Now we're ready to Contact cement and attack. Okay, now we have the edge around our shield and our strips contact cemented. We have our Sharpie line right here. We're going to line our piece up on our Sharpie line just like that. And we're going to push it down a little bit at a time, just like so. And that's it. It's stuck on. Now all we got to do is make our way around and squeeze it down. Attached our next piece. All right, we're coming in for a landing. Here we go. All right, see that how we're approaching the end here? Now we're gonna have to make a mark. Okay, now what we're going to do to make sure that this does not stick to this is we're going to put a piece of paper in the middle. Okay, now we know. See how we did that? We used a piece of paper because contact cement only sticks to other contact cement. So that we were able to slip a piece of paper in between so it doesn't stick so we could get our measurement. Now, there we go, just like that. Now, we're gonna come in and we're gonna contact cement both ends because they're gonna have to stick together. Now we're going to get in here, we're gonna get that side. All right, now both ends are contact cemented, so we wait five and then pow, contact all the way around. And we're going to, see how we're bending that? We're bending that down. We're gonna stick it right together there at the front, like so. We're gonna press that down in and connect. And see how this is not connected right here? You can see through that gap, that's okay because foam gives. We wanted to make sure we got this end stuck end to end, which it just did. Now all we have to do is come in and go like that. We're gonna make sure we've got good contact all the way around, which looks like we do. Pretty nice and really easy. Okay, now what we did is we came in and we evenly spaced out where all of our rivets are going to go around the outside end of the shield. Okay, so if you watched our episode making an EVA foam night helmet, you saw the rivets, our googly eyes. I'm going to put a puddle of super glue down. We're going to grab a googly eye covered with glue. We're going to put it down. We're going to hold it there while it bonds. That's it. Now we just go all the way around. Nothing says fierce warrior like the jangle of googly eyes. But they look awesome when we cover them with Plasti Dip. They're gonna okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start making our two straps for the back of our shield. We're going to have one for our hand and a second one for our forearm. And we cut a second little piece we're going to wrap around for a handle. Okay, now both of our pieces are dry. We're going to come in and we're going to lay this straight down in the middle like that. Line that seam up all the way down like we're doing. See that? Look how simple that is. And you got a nice little cushion grip there. Sweet. 
Okay, there's where our two handles are going to go. Now we just need to make our marks while we're going to glue. A little bit of contact cement. Just a hair wider. We want our hand to be able to get in there and our fist to squeeze. So there we go. Glue here and here. And out. If it feels a little bit loose, you can always take a little super glue. Put a little bit down. Just hold it down till it bonds. We've got the start of our next piece, contact cement and contact cement. Okay, five minutes has passed. Here and here. All right, wait five. Very cool. And it's snug enough to where when you pull it out, you got to get your hand out of there like that. But that's perfect. Not too loose, not too snug. Okay, now our last piece is going to be our round steel dome in the middle of our shield. And we're going to have to heat shape for that. And so this is what we're going to use. We found a pestle that's the perfect size we need from Target. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay a piece of foam over the top of it. We're going to heat the foam and we're going to use a styrofoam ball to push the foam down in and we're going to shape our dome that way. See how it's starting to droop? All right, now we're going to hold it down in like that. And we're going to stretch it a little bit each time and we're just going to go around the whole thing like that. All right, now we're gonna take our styrofoam ball out. That's all there is to it. Use the styrofoam ball to push it in and slowly work around the edge and stretch it out. Now it's a little wonky around the edges, but we're gonna be getting rid of that. So what we did is we cut it out and we'll just use this as our template. There it is. Now we're gonna cut it out and then when we contact cement around the bottom, we can get it down nice and flush and it's gonna be perfect. You won't see any of that waviness. Okay, now we're simply gonna go in with our X-Acto knife, keep our knife slightly standing up because we wanna pivot around this whole circle. Now when we contact cement and we push this down, it's gonna lay flat and it's gonna be totally beautiful. There we go, just enough for a slight rounded edge. We measured our shield and we struck a center line and then we took our piece and we got the center line on that. So now we know when we slide it up and we line it up, it's gonna be perfectly centered in the middle of the shield. Okay, so we only need to do about this much for gluing and then we'll stick this down. And remember, go just a hair past the Sharpie line because you wanna make sure that it's gonna make total contact right up to the edge. Waited five minutes, time to stick. So we're going to come down, we're gonna stick down right here, and that's it, it's tacked down. Now we just go around and we push the edge down like that. Hot dog, look at that. Now all we have to do is put our smaller flat rivets around the inside and we're done. Okay, there we go. We used our super glue, we stuck the X-Acto knife into a rivet, we dipped it in super glue. We held it down for a second so it bonded. We and there we go. Completed Viking shield. That is crazy awesome. All right, that was it. Check it out. Sweeter than sweet. Look at that. Uh, you saw how we did all these details. It was super easy. Uh, we've got our wood slats, we've got our wood grain, we've got our double steel band around the shield, we've got our rivets, we've got our flat rivets around the center, we've got our heat shaped uh, steel cone in the middle, um, went together like a glove, uh, you saw this, this is easy, you can do this. Um, we completed the whole build in one episode. Um, so in our next episode, making an EVA foam Viking shield part two, we're going to seal it with Plasti-Dip. We're going to paint it up to look like weathered wood. 
uh, the weathered steel around the edge, the weathered steel in the middle, and we're gonna paint the super cool two-headed uh, dragon spitting fire uh, in red on the shield. So, uh, and you're gonna see, like you've seen before, the painting is gonna be as easy as the build was. So uh, that's it, that concludes making an EVA foam Viking shield part one. I uh, hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, give us a like and share us with a friend and uh, subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot of super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.